Hi, middle schoolers. We are back to talk about the third of the three sacraments of initiation. We already focused on baptism and confirmation, and now we are moving on to Holy Eucharist. So the Eucharist is often described as the source and summit of our faith. Source meaning that everything in our faith finds its origin in the Eucharist. And summit meaning that everything in our faith is directed towards the Eucharist and the Mass. It's the greatest gift uh, that we have been given because the Eucharist is not just bread and wine, isn't bread and wine, but is Jesus himself, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And we know, of course, that Jesus gives us the Eucharist at the Last Supper, on the night before he is betrayed, the night before he is crucified, that he gathers with the apostles and institutes this great sacrament of sacrifice made possible by his crucifixion the next day and that he instructs the apostles and by extension the entire church to celebrate the Eucharist, to partake in the Eucharist until he comes again. Even before though the institution of the Eucharist in the Gospels, there are multiple um, stories interwoven throughout sacred scripture that help prepare us for and foreshadow the Eucharist. In the very beginning of sacred scripture in Genesis, we see bread and wine offered to God as a um, sacrifice, as an offering, um, an offering of, of thanksgiving. Bread and wine often uh, symbolize the goodness of creation and the goodness of the Creator who has given bread to nourish us, wine uh, to drink, to sustain us. And so we see even very early on in scripture, uh, bread and wine being used as a sacrifice to God, um, notably very early on by Melchizedek, um, priest at the time of Abraham. And then we come to one of the greatest foreshadowings of the Eucharist in sacred scripture, the Passover meal. So just a little bit of context here. Right before we arrive at the story of the Passover, we find the uh, ancient Israelites living as slaves in Egypt that under Pharaoh, they, they had no freedom. They lived a life of bondage. So God heard their grumblings, heard their cries of, of slavery and of oppression, and God sends Moses to free them from slavery, free them from bondage. This is where the 10 plagues come in. And ultimately at the 10th plague, God gives Moses specific instructions to give the people to celebrate what is called the Passover meal. So God uh, gives instructions to Moses to uh, have the people sacrifice a young lamb, an unblemished male lamb. And they're going to sacrifice this lamb, eat the flesh of the lamb. They're going to paint the flesh, uh, excuse me, paint the blood of the lamb on their doorpost. During this night, the angel of death is going to come to kill all of the firstborn sons in the land of Egypt. But the angel um, will pass over the house with the blood on the doorposts. The angel of death will pass over the houses of the Israelites that are marked with the blood of the lamb. And it's ultimately through this Passover meal that the ancient Israelites are able to escape into freedom, able to escape out of bondage in Egypt under Pharaoh. This foreshadows the Eucharist because God saved his people, um, just as God saved his people from slavery under Pharaoh. God will save us from slavery to sin and to death through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the cross of Jesus Christ made present to us through the Eucharist. Jesus in the Gospels, at the Last Supper, and then at the crucifixion becomes our new lamb of sacrifice. When we receive his body, his blood, the spirit of death passes over us. So just as the ancient Israelites were able to find freedom through eating of, of the lamb and by um, sprinkling its blood on their doorposts, so too do we find freedom, do we find everlasting life through the flesh, the body of Christ, and by his blood. After the Israelites left Egypt, though things weren't perfect, they wandered in the desert for 40 years. And as they're wandering in the desert towards the Promised Land, 
uh, they become very, um, very hangry, very uh, dissatisfied um, as they're without food. And be, they begin to grumble against God and against Moses. So God gives them this food to sustain them, this food called manna, which literally means, what is it? This manna is given to them from heaven. It falls like dew fall in the morning. And the Israelites are said, um, are told to collect the manna to feed themselves and to feed their families. This bread appears miraculously each morning for them, this bread from heaven given to God to nourish and sustain them on their journey to the promised land. Similarly, the Eucharist is given to us to nourish us, sustain us on our journey to not a physical promised land, but towards heaven. Coming up to the Gospels, Jesus also performs a lot of miracles involving bread and wine to foreshadow the Eucharist. He turns water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana and multiplies um, loaves of bread to feed hungry crowds who have gathered to listen to him teach and preach. These miracles signify that, um, that the eternal food that God is going to give us is going to be abundant. That our God is a God of abundance where we will never be left um, wanting. We will always be fed, we will always be nourished. And then from here we move into, of course, the, the ultimate scripture, the institution of the Eucharist. So the night before Jesus died, Jesus gathers together his 12 apostles to celebrate the Passover meal. So Jesus himself is instituting the Eucharist at the meal that um, the Israelites that the Jewish people have celebrated for centuries upon centuries, this hearkening back to God's freeing the Israelites of slavery and bondage while in Egypt. But Jesus does something different here. Jesus changes the Passover meal so that it's not just a remembrance of what God had done for the Israelites in Egypt, but he makes it something new. And so we turn to sacred scripture. We're going to look at Matthew's gospel. Uh, Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, broke it, giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus transforms the bread and wine of this meal into his body and his blood, which will be sacrificed for them, sacrificed for all of us on the cross the following day. His body, his blood become our everlasting food. He becomes our new sacrificial lamb that saves us from slavery, saves us from death. In this first celebration of the Eucharist, he commands his followers to do this in memory of him. He commands this until the end of time, until his second coming. In giving us the Eucharist, he leaves us a pledge of love in order to never depart from us. Makes them share, sharers, makes us sharers in his Passover. He institutes the Eucharist as a memorial of his death and resurrection and commands us to celebrate it. The Eucharist is the greatest gift that we have been given. The greatest gift of God as the Eucharist is God himself. The word Eucharist literally means Thanksgiving, but there are other names we know the Eucharist as. Uh, the Lord's Supper, the Holy Sacrifice, Holy Communion, the Holy Mass. Regardless of what, uh, what we call the Eucharist, what we call the celebration, it is the greatest gift and we should be thankful for this opportunity to receive Jesus himself fully present, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Through the Eucharist, we are nourished in our divine life. We are given the, the spiritual food necessary for a journey towards heaven. Now when the Israelites ate the manna in the desert, as they're wandering towards the promised land, or when the crowds who gather to hear Jesus teach and preach ate the multiplication of the fish and loaves, they eventually were hungry again later. They weren't fully satisfied. 
no matter how much they ate, they would never be fully satisfied. But the Eucharist offers us total satisfaction, total fulfillment. Jesus doesn't want us to be uh, spiritually hungry. Jesus doesn't want us to be unsatisfied. Our souls are hungry for fulfillment, for joy, peace, purpose. And so often we want to snack on and fill on the things of this world, things that don't ultimately satisfy us. Distractions, comforts, vices that leave us aching and yearning for more. Jesus knew that we would be hungry. And so Jesus gives us the bread that does satisfy us, gives us himself present in the Eucharist. Just as um, regular bread nourishes our body, the Eucharist nourishes our souls. And when we have Jesus inside us, Jesus changes us. We become living monstrances, living tabernacles after taking Jesus into us at the Mass. And so we are called as Catholics to have the greatest appreciation, the greatest reverence for the Mass. It's why we are commanded as Catholics to gather every Sunday and Holy Day of Obligation for Mass. Because we need the Eucharist. Even if the Mass seems boring, even if the Mass seems repetitive, even if maybe we don't understand everything that's happening in the Mass, which we'll look at later next week, God still gives us himself. How wonderful it is that God desires to give us himself so humbly, so fully. You are never alone. Jesus is here with you, present to you in the Eucharist. He hears your prayers. He loves you. And he humbled himself, coming to us as bread and wine, in the appearance of bread and wine, so that he can share his divine life with you. He never leaves us. He is present to you.